Thank you for waiting. We have enabled God mode for Danny. Danny's video is not going to show for this portion, but Danny, you're still out there, right? I'm here. I'm here. I'm just a spirit now. Just in spirit mode, Danny will be speaking from the heavens to us as we welcome our guests to speak to us about the importance of core web vitals. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourselves? All right. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Rebecca Rodriguez. I'm a senior product manager on the browser agent team. I'm here with Lindsay. Lindsay, you want to introduce yourself? Yes. Hi, Lindsay Farina. I am a product manager um, on a couple of different things, um, but going to be representing browser as a subject matter expert today. Yeah. Awesome. And then so today we are going to talk to you all about core web vitals. Um, you know, what the heck are these? Why are they important? Um, we'll kind of just give you the rundown here. So we're going to jump right in and, and get started. Um, so we mentioned we were uh, product managers and subject matter, matter experts on the browser side of things. So we're going to really be talking here about browser performance. So Core Web Vitals is all a topic of browser performance monitoring, um, just to kind of set the scene <laughs> of where we're headed. Um, so I, I just want to talk a little bit of the history of, of this, and then we're going to jump in and show you a bit into New Relic itself and how you can see these, these, these uh, important metrics. All right. So backing up a little bit here um, to talk about browser monitoring. Um, so, so traditionally, browser monitoring has been focused on classic navigation timings. So specifically, this, this one, uh, this kind of one timing to rule them all, this page load time. This was the go-to uh, event. This is the go-to metric that you'd want to track to in to ensure that uh, essentially your, your uh, page was optimized, your application was optimized. So um, this is still a great, a, you know, kind of a benchmark. However, you know, there's, there's, there's some reason this is, this is flawed. Um, so you may be tracking this one load event. Um, and you may see that this one load event fired at like 1.3 seconds. And like, that sounds really fast. You say, okay, this is great. Um, our, our performance is doing really well. Um, however, your users are seeing this page here. So they're just seeing this, this blank white page. And you say, well, why is that? That's really what I would have expected. Um, however, they might have programmed things such that um, uh, content is loading a little bit later asynchronously. Um, so they may not be having the best experience. Um, so while it seems fast, this is what your, your users is, are actually. As a web application developer, I find that very soothing though. Just blank white screen. There's nothing broken there. It's just, it's very calming for me. I don't have to worry about fixing any of that. Mm -hmm. This is the new look yeah. of 2021. Just yeah. Blank page. All web pages. Yeah. Yeah. It makes I mean, easier, that, right? that can, that can start to be the goal. Um, Very minimalist. We can, we can contact the, the web performance gurus and, and just tell them what we've decided that this is, this is really what we all should strive for. We decree here. Um, yes. Excellent. As in space. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so knowing this and knowing that is actually, uh, likely uh, a poor user experience. Uh, There's a lot of research done in this space to really do better than that. So in comes these uh, user-centric perceived performance uh, uh, metrics. So uh, while these navigation timings, such as that page load, could tell you about how your server is responding, they weren't, like we said, telling you anything about the user experience. So they weren't telling you, like, what is happening? Is, is this page? Useful? Is it usable? Is it delightful? All those good user-centric, um, you know, uh, information that would be important. So that being said, uh, there was this there was, again a, a bit more research here, and this really came out of uh, Google's research into this space. Um, and these are uh, user what we call the core web vitals, which I'll show you today in New Relic, and they're user-centric performance metrics that touch on. Um, the user's experience of that page load, the interactivity of that page, and really the visible stability of that page. Um, 
I'll go over them on a high level here and we'll just get into them uh, straight in New Relic um, following. So uh, the first one being largest contentful paint. Um, so this is the time that it takes for a page, page main content to load. Um, so kind of the biggest item on your page uh, to load that, that would be recorded as the largest contentful paint. And there's some ranges there underneath of uh, what is the appropriate um, you know, uh, timing of, of the largest potential paint good needs improvement versus poor. And then the second one is first input delay. And so this is the time that takes your page to become interactive. Um, so there's some timings there as well. So that might be like when, a, when you first press on the button or, or something in, in, in that nature. And then finally, this cumulative layout shift, that's kind of like how bouncy your page is <laughs> to, to animate it a bit here. And uh, it's really if your page is uh, shifting around and you're not able, an ad comes in or you know there's something on that page that's causing you to not be able to interact with it. Um, like really how bouncy this page is. So um, all these you know metrics here are you know really what you should like really start paying attention to. So I want to to point them out, and we've gotten these um, integrated into uh, New Relic. So I'm going thought, to. I'll just jump in yeah, here to add a little, yeah. um, just a little color commentary on this. Um, the thing, the thing to really note about these new metrics is, I I can almost guarantee that most users who engage with a website don't feel the page load time, but you can feel these these uh, new metrics. You are a user, you engage with websites every single day. And so these are the metrics for you, for us. Um, and I want to know how long it takes before the thing that I'm interested in is gonna load on that page. So if it's a significant piece of content and it takes a really long time to load and I have a competitor, I'm possibly gonna go to a competitor's page if, I, if I'm not getting that good experience. And first input delay, which is my favorite metric of all is is essentially what I would call the frustration metric um, because it's all well and good if there's stuff on the page and it looks really pretty, but if I click on something and nothing happens, I'm not going to be happy, um, especially if it's a site that I engage with all the time. Like, let's say you go to New Relic and you start clicking on certain things and, you know, a new chart doesn't load or the query doesn't run you're going to get really frustrated. And that's when you hear this concept of rage clicking. You just start click, 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 and you go crazy. Um, and the same thing with, with cumulative layout shift is that like that concept of like, I click on an article and I start reading and then all of a sudden a gigantic ad shows up and everything that I was reading like is now suddenly off the page. That's super frustrating. So these are all just like this, this beautiful um, way to paint the, the way that you feel when you engage with a, with a website. But to be clear, you won't experience any of these in the poor category on New Relic. Everything in New Relic is perfect. It's a very yeah. small and easy to maintain product. We don't have any problems. Yeah, no, we never. We're not going to show you anything that would ever be in the red here, <laughs> except that we are. Oh, well, if there's that. <laughs> yeah, twist because of the you century. know what? We like, we like the, the other really key element of this is that it's new. And you're not always going to be in the green right away for a metric that you didn't even know existed. Um, and they're not new, 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 but they're, they're, these uh, Core Web Vitals came out in May of 2020. And the other thing to note is that there's gonna be new ones every year. Um, so this is just based on tons of research up to now. And you know we, we kind of got stuck in that one metric world forever and it was really easy and we all got really comfy. And we're like, oh, load event, like that sounds so great. It's so easy. I can just tell people that like three seconds is super fast. Um, and and that's just not the way that this world is. We're all super impatient human beings and we want everything to be faster and prettier and load, you know, and, and, and be more um, visually stimulating and exciting without being frustrating. Um, so these will likely continue to evolve as that, um, as humans become more miserable. <laughs> or as all pages just turn into blank page. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the or white page revolution. Go back to that yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so here's an example of us eating our own, you know, uh, drinking our own champagne, eating our own dog food, however you would like to to talk about it. Um, and this is the new summary page that we've built for for our browser application. And this uh, this is part of New Relic One. Um, you can still toggle back to the old view if you if you like it. Um, but it's not going to have any of these snazzy metrics. Um, 
what we've tried to do is really highlight these and what we've done also is to try to display a little bit of a color um, alerting to, to line up with the recommendations that you saw on the on the 75th percentile um, page. So right now we're seeing that this particular application has a, you know, has a not so great or aka poor largest contemporary payload time. And there's a lot of different things that we could be doing um, to go in and, and check this page and see what's happening. Um, and, and make sure that we're actually delivering content in a, in a speedy way. Um, and I happen to pick this because it's also, you know, again, a double whammy of eating your own dog food because it's a browser application or JS server's page. And so it's very possible that our users experience some level of frustration with just the initial loading. Um, but what's, what's an interesting thing is to like try to tie these all together. So it took a while for the content to load and that's not great. But the positive aspects of it are that once that content is loaded, it's really snappy. So if people are clicking around and they're doing certain things, then they're getting a good responsiveness. Um, and that can often be the, the better thing to focus on. Um, at the beginning of these metrics, people really like super highlighted the paint metrics and they were really, you know, desperately trying to eliminate that white screen of, of peace and calm to get anything they possibly could on the page as quickly as possible. But what that did is that they forgot to focus on everything else running on the main thread. And so they got content up super fast, but then there were so many other activities happening on the main thread that you couldn't click anything for a really long time. So you might see a really low number in largest contemporary paint and a really nasty number in first input delay. And that made people even more unhappy. So. When I see a web page, I might be a little bit more tolerant if it takes a second to like load the content, but I'm very intolerant of not being able to do what I want to do once that's there. Um, so there are just different ways of thinking about it. Um, the other one I want to highlight on this uh, this page is this uh, this page load times um, kind of lined up together. And what's really nice about this is that you can kind of gauge how your users. Um, what level of patience they have um, and how quickly they're engaging. So what's nice is that we see that while, you know, we might have a, a little bit of an issue with uh, an, a, uh, an above four second content load, my interaction times are in the, you know, five to, to 12 second range. So I have a little bit of leeway before my, my users are starting to get antsy and start to click around. Um, which is nice. Like it, it you really want to make sure that you do have space between those paint metrics and that interaction time. And if those two start creeping together, you have to very, very, very much take advantage of like paying attention to what other um, actions are running on your on your main thread at that time because you do not want to get into a, um, a space where things are starting to get um, unresponsive and, and unwieldy. Um, Kind of the other thing I would note about this is that, like I said, these are new. Don't like, don't freak out. If you if you load the summary page and everything is red, and you're like, oh my god, what am I going to do? There are some definite easy tips and tricks. Um, and what's great is that because you know the Google devs have done tons of research, they've also done an amazing job at documenting this stuff. So we have links all over our documentation to their documentation. Um, we have a whole video where I did like 45 minutes of talking around all the things that could possibly happen when you go into the core web vitals world. Um, so if you want to just blow like two or three days, there's plenty of stuff to read. I yes. needed something to read before bed. So yeah, perfect. right. I mean, it's, it's nice relaxing, um, uh, uh, you know, scientific mathematical research on, on how these things all correlate. Yes. Um, other common things that we hear, um, uh, old metrics that were kind of like the new fad back in when they first released these things that we don't um, have in, in New Relic and that is intentional. So uh, I wanna just nip this one in the bud. Why do we not have time to interact with? And browser metrics, it's a question I get all the time. And first and foremost, it is not a RUM metric. So that's very important when it comes to these uh, user-centric perceived performance metrics. There are two categories. There are lab metrics and there are field metrics. And some metrics can be both, but some metrics are very much not. So first input delay is very, very much not a lab metric. It actually requires somebody to like engage with 
um, a site. And while you could do it in a testing synthetic environment, um, it's not something that you uh, should should be capturing um, just uh, unless you do have some way of, of engaging uh, with the site for your test. Um, and therefore, the comparable one to that is time to interactive, which just simply looks at what's on your main thread and says, is there a block of time um, when the, the thread is responsive uh, or, or it's freed up enough for this page to be responsive? And then it calculates that. Um, but it doesn't actually take any engagement. And then all of the paint metrics, um, those can be both. I, I can calculate in a, in a perfect world how quickly the content loads, and I can calculate in a real user world. Um, and what's also really lovely about all of these metrics is that this is just, you know, this is just the 75th percentile of all your data. You can slice and dice these, you know, with, as with all of your event data in New Relic and start really getting a picture. Like, what is that largest contemporary paint by URL? What is it by geography? Um, are there certain uh, parts of your um, customer base that are actually causing this to skew? Is there somebody that's using, you know, some, some, uh, some really old browser and although these are mostly only supported for Chrome browsers, but like, is there something really squirrely about that data that you might wanna actually um, exclude going forward? So you, I would, I would absolutely encourage people to like take this and then go build some cool dashboards. Um, and start to really understand your data. We're just giving you kind of like the first um, first look. Um, and cumulative layout shift is also an interesting one. Uh, similar to LCP, they're not just one capture. Um, so, you know, if you think about a page load, uh, this image loads and, you know, it's the biggest thing on the page, but then in a second, this other image loads and it's now the new, the biggest thing on the page. And so we're actually calculating this over time. Um, and the same thing with uh, cumulative layout shift, which we report multiple times. But LCP, we wait um, and we just keep updating the value until we we know that we finally hit the largest one. But cumulative layout shift, we're actually reporting it to you at a couple of different points. So if you wanted to really see like in that page load journey, when things started to go haywire, you can break it down. So like when, you know, when first interaction, what is, what is the cumulative layout shift for my, for my, uh, you know, moment in time when people starting to interact, what is it for the moment of time when the largest content is on the page? Is that the thing that's shifting things out? Um, lots of ways to, to play around with this data and get exciting. And now I've forgotten what else I was going to say. I'm sure Rebecca could get me on track. <laughs> that was, that was excellent. I think I learned some things there, Lindsay. <laughs> no. Bring us forward. Always. <laughs> um, that's awesome. Thank you for all that information. We have some uh, resources as well. Um, if they're not in the Twitch channel, make sure we'll get them out to you um, and our Twitch hosts, hosts here. Um, is there any, any, any questions in the, the Twitch chat? We had a comment that this should be required reading for anyone who says front end development is easy, which I found kind of. I amazing. agree. Um, so my my whole talk um, is really about how maddening this stuff can be. Like you can drive yourself completely crazy mm -hmm. if if you go and especially if, if you look at like a small subset of your data and you're trying to do some correlation based on like one person's experience. Um, this is not, I would just caution against it. Don't get yourself in the weeds. Really try to keep yourself a little bit at a higher level. Um, because if, if you do start to do it, you know, I wouldn't be like, oh, a customer support ticket came in for this one user and I'm going to look at this one instance and they had a really bad experience. Like you'll, you'll go bananas. Um, the other thing I would note is, you know, these, these metrics are available for in things like Lighthouse, Google Lighthouse, and you're not going to get a one-to-one -one mapping with rum data and something as synthetic as lighthouse because it's not going to be getting all of your real traffic um so you 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 will likely have pretty you know disparate uh data points there that's really like looking at it from a more synthetic perspective and a kind of like happy happy space um but yeah i mean there's there's so many ways if you if you scroll down on the on the summary page we added a couple of other charts as well, just to give you, really just to give you an idea of some of the things you might, some of the questions you might want to ask of this data, um, you know, which which uh, of your URLs is actually 
not the not having the best responsiveness. Um, and that to me is like, you know, the thing that is, is important. And again, when you start to look at these things and it's something like very, very, very specific or just like, you know, uh, one account that's having a problem, you know, that's great if you can get um, an indicator that is uh, that straightforward. Um, but it also, you know, I would say, you know, watch it over time. Um, and we do have some new um, new features that are coming out next week, not just to give you kind of a, a, a very high level, but we have a product called Lookout that also incorporates largest contemporary paint and first input delay. And that feature is gonna let you look at all of your applications together and um, kind of figure out scope and, and size and, and, uh, uh, and, and percent change that could highlight and help you figure out where you need to focus your attention. And so what I mean by that is, if I'm looking at data, you know, I have the last five minutes of data and I'm now comparing that to like what happened the last hour, if something has significantly deviated, much like the anomalous traces, I want to focus my attention there. I want to know why something has changed. And so if suddenly I'm, I'm getting a really, uh, really bad largest contemporal paint, I might check that I have done something naughty in a deployment, um, or if there is some sort of uh, service that is causing a problem with, with loading my content, um, because that that's definitely something that you don't want to see uh, any sort of significant deviations. And if you do, and you haven't touched anything, then that's you know even more of concern. So I, I would use those tools together, and, and it's great that we have that kind of um, you know, right now we're, we're zoomed in on one particular application, but you can see them all all together, which is really nice. Excellent. And we had a, a special guest chiming in right at the end here on this. I appreciate that. Uh, we are always welcoming dogs on the stream. So we, I think, have finished with our time allotted for this episode, unless you have any final thoughts to add quickly. Yep. Just check out documentations and then go down the Inception black hole of documentation within. Enjoy the ride.